Hello once again, this is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to Beautiful Studio B, and this is tips number 874, and it's another video about these Vivo annular cutters. I think you liked the first one, and we're going to do a little something differently with these than what you typically would see, and it will all be done on the lathe rather than the milling machine or the magnetic drill. Now, I will be getting a magnetic drill in the near future, so there will be a video on that as well. But let me show you what we're going to do today. And this is the set of Viva annular cutters. There are six of them in there. I hope you watch the other video. And here's a picture of what the title page looks like if you want to check that out. So be sure and look also in the description below of the video where I will have a, a link to these if you're interested and a discount code as well as a link to that other annular cutter video that I made. If you haven't seen this video yet I think you will like it. Well I'm going to use the one inch cutter again out of this set with the three quarter shank and what I want to do today is to make some spacers and washers. If you have worked very much in a shop, you know that there's always bushings that you need to make or spacers, various things like what you see here in my junk drawer. But even though I have a nice selection here, typically I do not have exactly what I want. Now in the other video, I did make this on the lathe. It's just inch and a half by a one inch hole. But that just turns out so beautifully. So the first little exercise today will be similar, but aluminum. I haven't used these for aluminum yet, so I'll be drilling a one-inch hole in here. And it could be any length you want. I don't think I mentioned this in the other video, but there are two disadvantages to annular cutters. One is you cannot drill or machine a blind hole. You have to go all the way through the work. And secondly, we have a maximum thickness that we can drill of one, well, no, it's two inches with these. Some are made longer, some are a little shorter, but these have a two inch capacity. Also, someone suggested, can you use these for a milling cutter? Well, I never tried that, and I don't think I will. I have plenty of cutters for that purpose, so I, I just don't think that would be a good idea. Again, today I will be using this huge Jacobs ball bearing chuck to hold the cutter. And several people said, well, you need to make an adapter or something. This has worked pretty well and I like the fact that there's a tang going into the tailstock so this cannot turn. But I had considered using these uh, collets here and I did try it but there was something wrong with this. I'd never used this before. It's a number three Morris taper but I cannot tighten this. There's something that is wrong in here. I examined it. I can't really figure it out. So I cannot use this. But in a future video, I will be taking this blank, number three Morse taper, machinable arbor, and I will bore a hole in here and put some set screws in, and it can then be the holder of the cutter. So watch a video for that. You can also buy milling cutters, and I already looked at them in Shars that would, and I think they're about $22, that will hold this. Also are available at Shars are R8 shanks with a three-quarter hole. I am using a closing 12-inch lathe and it is a three horsepower motor and it has back gears at very slow speed so I'm going to run this at about two or three hundred RPM. Again I'd rather run it slow and preserve the cutters because I'm not really in a hurry. It, I may speed up some of the footage here so that it isn't too painful for you. But this may not be possible to do on smaller machines that do not have uh, much uh, horsepower, especially when you get into the larger cutters like this. But let's see how this works. I don't think it'll take long in aluminum.
Well, there's the sluggo, still a little bit warm. And here is the bushing or the spacer, and it's just a beautiful finish. And as far as checking it for a one inch size, I'm going to use this Starrett taper gauge for a change. I don't know if you've ever seen me use that. But, look at that, right up on the one inch. So it's pretty darn accurate. Possibly not accurate enough to use as a bearing, but that turned out real nice. And you can see that there'd be a lot of uses for, the, for these. These cutters are all marked on the shank as to the size, and you can see this is inch and a quarter, and that means that it's two inches long. So that's what I'm going to use now, and we'll make a bearing out of brass. I haven't used brass in quite a while, have I? And this is, what, about one and three quarters, although that doesn't matter and an inch long so let's see how that works and you notice that this did not slip in that Jacob chuck which surprised me nor did the chuck slip in the a tailstock nor did the work slip in the three jaw lathe chuck so that all worked pretty well considering I didn't have the correct adapter alright about 200 rpm again let's go That didn't take long did it and the work isn't even hot the finish is not good at all let me take it out and we'll examine it Wow that brass cut like butter didn't it and there's the slug which some people will want to save <laughs> but the finish is just absolutely terrible so it could not be used as a bearing it would have to be bored or reamed or something like that but as a spacer it's just fine and it, it did drill quite a bit oversized this should be 1.250 so it's about 16 thousandths larger than it should be and you can see how sloppy that is but it really cut nice and it was pleasurable to see those little chips come out of there let's make another spacer bushing this is two inch diameter leaded steel and one and a half inch annular cutter Well, there it is. Did a nice job. Not a great surface finish, but I don't think anyone ever said that these produced a reamed or bored finish. But it looks pretty nice and it didn't take long to do that. Admittedly, this was fairly soft steel. And there's the slug. Quite a bit of deburring to do here. I think you can see the burr right there. But it turned out nice. It just took, what, just a minute or two to make that. Well, there you have it. Aluminum, brass, and steel. All of these big holes drilled in a short order with these wonderful annular cutters. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment if you did. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video, I hope. So long for now.